Uh, it's Taylor Bridges back with another review today I'm specifically reviewing ready to love season 7 episode 5 um, this episode was cool too it was cool it was cool um, last episode was just a bunch of childish behavior from mid to 30 mid 30 to 40 year olds it was a bunch of hoo-ha um, of Jeffrey, Marcia, and Corvea, I know Jeffrey isn't going home. I'm initially thinking Marcia's gonna go home, but then I was like, you know what? If I tally up the few dudes that actually still rock with Corvea, Marcy's dudes would definitely match up to that number, to be honest. Um, and I didn't feel like going back and forth and actually tallying from the guy's deliberation last episode, but I was like, Marcia probably has just as much as Corvea because Corvea's um, options had thinned down a lot last episode. Um, but I did hear people like online uh, saying that they think the life's line was gonna be used. And it's so funny because they spent a whole scene arguing about it. I even talked about it on my last review and I never once for a second thought that they'd actually use it for Demario's behind. Like that never even crossed my mind. Like, so when I heard that theory, I was like, oh my gosh, that's so smart to even think that they might actually use the lifeline. But that never even crossed my mind. It was so ridiculous. The thought was so ridiculous that, um, but it was the theory that I could understand. Um, Especially since Tony was being like extra with Corvea, in my opinion. I was like, maybe he's being extra to like kind of throw us off. But really, he's going to be like, okay, no, nah, we actually want to save you all. That's what I mean by that. But it would have been too early um, to to do a lifeline. And trust me, they're, they would have been just, they're, they're okay with sending a heavy hitter home. Um, these people on, the, on Ready to Love are notorious for forcing a connection to get to the very end so either even though like jeffrey marcia and Corvea are pretty much like are were all three like some good front runner options on this season we can afford to lose a heavy hitter early on these people don't care they the men will find a way to carry on without their connection you see what cynthia did when andre couldn't come back for, uh from COVID. she moved right on and boom they do not care. Um, the women, men, neither. Um, they will cling on to somebody, anybody, quick. Um, very few times do you get someone who leaves the show when their connection leaves. That's why we have to give Camille her props. She hung on to Cornelius for dear life. And when he left, she left. You can say whatever you want, but she was consistent and she was here for one person and she was not playing games. She was not like when Cornelius left, she wasn't trying to cling on to find another connection that whole way through. She was like, that's all I care about is him. So you got to respect that because other people in here will play games and think about like, what's who was that? Like Sabrina and Walter for Sabrina to play all these games to choose herself at the end. Like good decision, great decision. But it's like, since you could have been left, like if you knew you weren't going to choose Walter, you knew Walter and yourself wouldn't cultivate a real relationship like I wish more people would be mature to drop out like just be genuine through the process if your person isn't here move on if the person you do connect with leaves then like and and and, and at the same time you don't have any more connections here then just go like it's not that serious um but they end up sending Corvea home and that's cool I can respect that decision for sure like I enjoyed Corvea for the time it lasted her dude just not on the show I mean that's just is what it is um I don't really know enough about Corvea to say whether she's ready to love or not but I just know her dude's not on the show and that's totally fine Corvea's not gonna have any issue meeting guys moving forward um now they're going to have like an after party at the Hard Rock Cafe. Uh, DeMario's pretty sad about Corvea going home. He will be fine. Um, oh, I don't know. DeMario kind of irked me this, this episode. We'll get into it though. Um, Sue Ann says that she's a mix between Claire Huxtable and Rihanna. And I'm like, did she say she looked like these two mixed together? Or did she say she exudes or like personifies a mix of these two? 
I need to know that because that would be really interesting if she's saying she looks like Claire Huxtable and Rihanna mixed together. That that's interesting. Marcia Marcia says she's a mix of Rihanna, Beyonce, and a few more, and she thinks she's letting Beyonce down by I think she mentioned like not working out or not eating properly, something of that matter. She's being silly because I'm like you know you're not saying you look like those either. And by the way, just because you don't look like a mix of Claire Huxtable and Rihanna, and Rihanna or Beyonce and Rihanna doesn't is no shade to anybody. It just means the similar the resemblance is just not there. That's all. Like that's it. The, I don't see the resemblance. So I'm like, are they saying they personify these people mixed, exude their aura, or was it like a a physical um, similarity there? I'm curious. Um, is Cynthia's baking powder too light? up in there up in here um she looks a little washed out to me it's something a little too light up in here for me is it just me um Sue Ann and Blake are having one-on-one -on -one time and she mentions the convo between she mentions the convo with Jeffrey and she felt like Jeffrey was being very childish and I totally agree Jeffrey keeps making it like Sue Ann was pressuring her and chastising her and like being confrontational about what happened with Blake and that's like the complete opposite of what happened Jeffrey was worked up over it she still worked up over it and every time it's brought up it's because Jeffrey brings it up or in this episode Marcia brings it up it's just, like that's it um so I do think Jeffrey's being very childish and I'm thinking did they did Jeff I mean did did um Sue Ann and Blake flat out address what Jeffrey said or or what went down with her and Blake? Like, did they just, um, like, flat out, like, talk about what actually happened with Jeffrey and Blake um, uh, last episode? Um, and honestly, if they didn't, that's okay, too. You know what I mean? Like, less, less drama. Like, they need to be focusing on each other anyway, not wasting energy speaking on Jeffrey the way Jeffrey is, you know, went on to yap about her and Blake after her and Blake's conversation. Um, Blake says Jeffrey flat out lied and he never told her he chose her. Um, I hope at some point there's a way to verify this information. I don't know. I doubt it. So we're going to maybe have to do the he say, she say. Um, it's really not that deep. At the end of the day, they're they're done. So just leave it at that. That's. I feel like Blake is ready to do that. It's just, for some reason, Jeffrey is just not letting it go. Um... Did y'all hear when Blake teased Sue Ann asking, so if Tommy says, Blake, you're out of here, are you going to be like, come on, we leaving? And it's like, would she do that this early? Would she leave? If you got eliminated, would she leave this early in the game for you? Should she? Um, I'm not sure how much Blake is even into Sue Ann, to be honest. I, I really can't tell. I honestly can't tell yet. Like, it's just not as obvious as I think it should be. It's obvious Sue Ann likes Blake. It is not obvious to me that Blake likes Sue Ann. He's being very nice to her. But I don't see him be romantic with her. I don't see it. I see him being nice with her. Um, I don't know. It seems like he just wants someone to just validate him. Um, and asking Sue Ann if she'd leave with him is equivalent to me to when Jeffrey said he asked her, could they just leave the process and just be together? Like it's very parallel to me. Like it's very similar asking that question. Like why, why, what incentive does Sue Ann have to leave right now if you got eliminated? Like, you haven't shown her much. Um, the singles are dancing and partying it up. Nothing more really interesting happens from there. So we move on to the dates that happened. And there were some pretty interesting dates. Andre and Cynthia are on a date. And I'm really liking their conversation. Uh, Andre asked some really great questions consistently. And Cynthia has some really, really great engaging answers. And they just had such a natural back and forth. And I haven't seen like an exchange like this in a while on Ready to Love. 
and I really loved it. Like it was just so organic, super adult, focused, intentional, mature. Um, and it really got, it's like they got somewhere as far as getting to know each other without it being just like awkward or too serious or, you know, it was light and, and pleasant, but it was still very informative. And they got to know each other and got to express vulnerability. So I really liked their conversation. Jeffrey and Demario on a date. And this is what I was waiting for. Oh my gosh. So, um, I don't know why it's like every time I turn on the camera, all of a sudden my allergies act a mess. That's so annoying. Um, Jeffrey said she noticed Demario shifted and he was like occupied at the yacht party, all the event. And, and, Demario is just caught up on the kiss Jeffrey shared with Mark Anthony. And I'm like, okay, at this point, come on, Demario. Like, I see both sides. In defense of Demario, I wouldn't want my boo kissing anyone in a group setting. But I also would not be on this show. So this is not really a likely scenario for somebody like me. So it's really... I, I know I talked to my ish in last episode about like Jeffrey and siding with Demario because I definitely see Demario's side, but it's like in complete fairness, I really can't, I'm not one, I'm not one to personalize this because this, I'm not like a sexy single in Miami looking for love. You know what I mean? Like I'm not in this scenario at all, nor would I ever be. So at the end of the day, Jeffrey is absolutely correct. It was a part of the game. Her kissing Mark Anthony was a part of the game. She was being a willing participant, a good sport. And this is a process. And you are not her man. And she can be into multiple people at once. Like, that's the point of the show. And it just seems like, here we go again with these men on the show not being able to handle when the women have multiple, connect multiple connections. But when they're having multiple connections, they want the they want to just have their cake and eat it, too. They only want it when it's in their favor. But these like once again, another season where we're seeing these men just like remember the season where Sabrina was on. The men couldn't handle that. Sabrina had like multiple options. They were they didn't like that. I'm sick of these men doing that. Um, He's really showing up like a little insecure to me in this moment. And I think he's like really being a crybaby, you know, when he's even talking about, like he's really just so caught up over this when he's talking to Jeffrey about it. And Jeffrey made a great point. Mark Anthony was applying pressure that day. And to really hear that Mark Anthony's grown behind, didn't even speak to um, Jeffrey on the yacht was super alarming and childish. And I'm like, why, why would Jeffrey choose you for a kiss? Mark Anthony was being kind, flirting, showing her attention. You appear, you were being childish from the get-go. Like, you already came with a little toot. That's very unattractive. He asks, how would your kids feel about you doing that? How would your kids feel about you kissing Mark Anthony? And I can, I can accept that whether someone, whether I think it's right or, a good, right or wrong, good or bad. I can accept that as a valid question. If he wasn't trying to weaponize her sentiment towards her kids. Like you asking how would your kids feel? He doesn't, you don't care about her kids. You're not asking that out of genuine care for her kids. So that's fake. You're trying to evoke emotion out of her and make her feel bad since she did not coddle your feelings about kissing Mark Anthony because she did nothing wrong. So you're being emotionally manipulative, Demario. You're going out sad. The audacity. I'm gonna bring up this lady, kids. What are your kids think? You don't even care about her kids. That's super childish. And Jeffrey ate him up. She went on one day with each man, with each, with each man. It is not that deep. She went on one day with Mark Anthony and one day with Joe behind. And then here y'all did have here y'all had an opportunity for a group date and you came up light. So yeah, Mark Anthony's in the lead right now. Just naturally. Um, she said, you know, he's automatically on her cancellation list. And I do like seeing Jeffrey cut these dudes off at the onset of the red flags, you know, that are clear as day. 
I really do love that. Like save time. I do like that. Once again, I keep, I brought her up again, but Sabrina did the same thing. And I really, I remember like feeling a little disdain towards Sabrina. And I also feel a little disdain towards Jeffrey, but I can respect it. I can respect these women coming in here, knowing what they want. And when they're seeing it's not working out between them and a the guy, they don't even waste time. To me, that's a sign of not being desperate. That's a woman with options. Meaning she don't, I don't have to waste time. I don't, I don't have, like this isn't working. I don't even have to pretend. I'm not that desperate to where I need to force this. Clearly, we have a difference of opinion. We have different perspective. It's not, I'm not rocking with it. That, that kid's comment was extremely childish to me. Like, that was really like emotional. That was super manipulative. And you don't even know this woman and you already like really bringing out your, you, you already getting your manipulative bag and you don't, you don't even know her yet. Dude, like you have no shame. Like none. Absolutely not. Demario says this was hilarious. Demario says he dodged three bullets. <laughs> One, he's never seen her without makeup. Now, he did he eat her up on this one a little bit. Of all the three, of the th all three of the dodged bullets he named, this is the one I can give to him. She is always super done up, like full glam. But I am a natural, so I'm also not, I don't really know what's considered full glam. Like makeup period is full glam. So I don't want to like, misjudge if she's really haven't been doing if she really hasn't been doing full glam um but she does look super done up all the time to me and i'm just one of those people i just believe in dressing committing to the occasion you know what i mean like when they went horseback riding like and, 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 like especially on tv they went horseback riding and you're wearing a fashion top with leggings and like all these layers of makeup like she did the same thing when going, that's when she was with Demario and she did, did the same thing when she went mechanical board riding with Mark Anthony. I remember thinking for both of those days, I wish she would have just dressed chill. Like she looks like it's always like a full thing going on. And like, I think there's still beauty in just being laid back and chill. Like you going horseback riding, wear a cute flannel, something button up, roll up your sleeves, some jeans, you know what I mean? Hair, however you want to wear it, two pigtails, one French braid, whatever you want to do, you know, like a little something just natural going on and maybe a little chapstick or a lip gloss. Like, but she had like full beat, you know, and it's hot. It's just like, it looks out of place. So I do admit, like, I do think she does do a full glam, a full beat. And I don't think it's necessary, but I do have, I, I definitely love a woman that keeps themselves up in public at all times. And so that's, be, even though I think she's a little over the top, she does put effort into herself and that says a lot about her she, she that she come that comes off hygienic like she takes her time with herself that she really invests in herself invests in her appearance invests in you know her look and I, and that's a good thing so i definitely like that part um but demario ate her up with this one bullet point the second um bullet he dodged was she doesn't take criticism well and i'm like you didn't even give her any constructive criticism you you were being emotional like you didn't give her any constructive criticism you criticized her yeah you criticized 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 but you did not give her any construct anything constructive you being super emotional your logic and reason were gone um and the third bullet he dodged um was that she doesn't know mark anthony that she was kissing a random again emotional like i don't want to say it's not masculine but okay like if this is masculine let's do like a notch under that's where i give demario when he's doing this or is he already at the like top notch already is he already there like that's he's really giving me a little under that masculine so like it's something real not masculine about it Like it's something real and I'm really not trying to do like the toxic masculinity thing at all, at all. It's just, you come, you really coming at a woman like hard because she's up, do, like doing what she's supposed to do on the show that y'all both signed up for. And that's what I'm not cool with. Like he's the type where he like will borderline be on some S L U T shaming. 
You know what I mean? Like, that's what he gives me. He gives me very spiteful. Like, whenever he gets eliminated, I was thinking, like, I'm thinking, like, he's not going to take it well. He's going to be one of those that goes out with a bang. Like, um, oh boy, who blew up on Sabrina. I cannot think of his name. Started with an A, I think. Um, but that's like, I, I don't know. He just gives me super emotional. And I just don't like the way he coming at this woman, trying to chastise her about really doing what she's supposed to do on the show. Um, Jeffrey, Marcia, Blue, and Blake are on a meditation day. And I'm like, oh, goodness. Why did they put them in the same room? Like, this is actually a waste of time. Like, why intentionally create this tense situation that's probably not going to give? Like, there are so many other connections we'd like to see. We, there are so many other people we'd like to see go on dates. Like, why do we have to keep revisiting um, Blake and Jeffrey? Like, why do we have to keep revisiting? They, they, they're, they're, they're done. Like, and then when did Blake and Marcia start to like each other? It just seemed really forced. Like, I can't. Blake couldn't relax at all. Like, Blake is just like a tense dude. You know what I mean? Um, but, I, like, I know it's kind of weird, but I don't dislike Blake. Not yet. Like, I think he's misunderstood. I don't think his woman is there. I do not think he is being genuine in his like an affection for Sue Ann, at least not as of late. I do not, I think Blake should go home now, but I don't dislike Blake. So I just want to put that out there. Um, Marcia brings up Jeffrey and Blake's conversation and I'm like, this is childish. Like this must have been a production play because otherwise this is stupid. Like this is really stupid. Like get to know Blake. Why are we talking? Get to know Blue. Like what are we, this is, this was such a waste I was like super disappointed. Um, this whole scene could have went to a new couple. Um, I'm glad Blake did decline to speak on it. And I wish Jeffrey did too. And it just seemed like she was ready to get ready to vent about it again. Like she did on the boat to um, Demario and Sue Ann. But thankfully, Blake did not engage that conversation. And then like Jeffrey's comments to on Blake's art you know, saying it seems materialistic. Like, let this man make his art and you make yours. Like, stop being petty. It's just like... <sighs> but her and Blue are feeling each other. And I'm actually here for that. Like, she seems a little nice nasty. Um, but it's like a 50-50 chance with her, depending on the side you get. Like, you either get the one, the side she was giving to um, Blake and the one she gave to the, and Demario, cool. Or she's given like the feminine, soft baby voice, icky, icky, icky. Like she's like she does to Blue and Mark Anthony. So okay, like when she is given that side, I don't mind it. So I'm interested in seeing her and Blue's connection because we haven't seen like much of Blue. Like now that they've already brought um, Anthony to the forefront finally, since they had gone like a couple episodes without showing him, like. Blue's the only one that I feel like hasn't caught up as far as camera time. I don't know. I don't know. Um, as far as Jeffrey, you have all this smoke for a dude you said chose you. He said he didn't say that. So there's that. You don't want him anymore. He doesn't want you anymore. So why are you acting like Blake just did something so egregious and deep? egregious and deeply horrible to you like are you looking for drama like move on you don't want him anymore right if I go around saying oh boy said he wanted to be with me and oh boy and a boy says he didn't say that why would I care it's like okay whatever like I'm not about to go above and beyond to prove my point about a dude that I I claim I do not want Especially when I have other connections I'm focused on. Like, put that energy elsewhere. Um, Morgan is linking with Tony again. And she looks beautiful in her lavender dress. And he looks super dapper, too. I love that they both dressed the part. And I think they look really good together. Like, they look good. But I'm like, will they talk about anything? 
Um, because Tony says a bunch of nothing and Morgan complains about who he's looking at and who he likes. Um, so I'm like, come on, I'm gonna need y'all to open up. I can't stand when Ready to Love d does that, where we focus in on couples over and over that end up really not getting anywhere. That really end up not talking about anything. Um, Tony asks, who does Morgan want in this process? And I'm like, that's a loaded question. Like, do you mean which guy literally, like by name she wants in this pro process? Or what kind of guy in general, like by description, does she want in this process? So I think he should have asked that question a little more specifically because she says she wants a man's man, everything that comes with being a man. And like, that was it. Like, that was the criteria, nothing else. And then she mentions that she like likes London. And I'm like, that's why I'm confused about what did you mean? Did, did she, is she saying Lyndon's name because he, he's asking who in the process do you want? Or like where, what's going on with this editing? I'm confused by the question. So didn't really learn much, but I know her saying the criteria of the kind of guy she wants is a man's man and everything that comes with being a man is Morgan Suo. Morgan's too old to be um, doing this, to be honest. That's that's what I think. Um, Morgan asks Tony, why now? And he says he's tired of being alone. And I, I don't know if I necessarily like that answer, but that is a common thing that men Tony's age do. They hip-hop, hippie, and hippity to the hip-hop um, all up and down the streets. And then when they behinds get old, And their manhood don't work like it used to. And, you know, those young guys have now stepped in and you know, they're not as appealing to the young girls anymore. So now they, you, you know, that's what happens. So I don't know about this. You're not wanting to be alone. I'm going to need for you to be ready for, uh, for other reasons than just that, in my opinion. Tony is also another one that's too, too doggone old. Um, Morgan says that, for her, why now is the fact that she's just in a great place in her life and basically a man is all that she's missing. And in a way, I'm not mad at that answer. She's pretty much saying, you know, she has her ducks in a row. She's good to go and she's ready. Women often are, well, let me say this. Women can be, are oftentimes ready earlier as far as like life being stable but in my opinion mentally and emotionally i think women take longer to actually be ready than they might than they than we realize than we realize i i i think so i think so um yeah that's i think so um they do a cheers and then tony gives morgan this random kiss and then he says he gave her the kiss to give her something to think about. And I'm like, am I missing something? Like, I definitely see their attraction for each other. But based on, like, I don't see any, I really just not, I'm not seeing, like, any real chemistry. Like, any real desire to, like, get to know the other. Like, really. I really don't, I don't see it. I feel like they are constantly, like, I don't know if it's editing or what. But I don't see what they've gotten to know about each other, to be honest. And I'm like, based on their personalities, that they've portrayed thus far, they aren't a good match for each other. Not for anything serious. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They will play games with each other in ring around the rosy form. Like, they they will just do cat and mouse. They will play with each other. I don't think, I don't think they make a good match. I think it's toxic, them two together, personally. But they do look good together. They, they're they aesthetically pleasing together. Um, Janique is on a date with Blake. And I'm like, wow, this is a matchup I didn't know I wanted to see. Um, and I was like, please, Blake, please show up with some energy. Because I like Blake. I really believe I understand Blake. I just want him to like portray that on camera. I want him to portray what I believe I see in him on camera but it's not gonna happen. Like Blake is not doing it. Um, Blake is dry on the date. And I'm like, I wonder if he's like, a, I don't think he's attracted to her. Like, I don't think he thinks she's ugly, obviously. I just don't think he's attracted to her. So he's, his energy is off. I don't even know why he showed up. He knows, I think she's a bit too much. Like I think, you know, she got the braids and then like the, like the aesthetic is definitely given a little 
little younger. No big deal. Like she's her age. She's she is younger. And I am glad he realized that they have a gap in terms of life experience. And because I think Blake is, though Blake is playing games, knowing he doesn't, I don't think he really wants to win. And I think, I don't think Blake's woman is there. I do think Blake is genuinely in a place in life where he is ready for something serious in terms of a romantic relationship. So I do think it's very great for him to notice, you know, when a woman, when he's just not equally yoked with a woman, the life experience is just so different. What are we going to talk about? Like he's just in a different place in his life. And I really believe that he is. So I'm glad he noticed that the feelings mutual. Johnny don't like us behind either. So it works out. It, it, I love this. I'm loving this already love as much as people are playing games on here. I am loving these other people that are nipping through it. And I'm also glad that we're able to see it documented. Like we're seeing people try and why specifically it doesn't work because what happens is once we get to the reunion, a lot of times it's like, Oh, People think I only went on dates with so-and-so, but really I went on dates with these four dudes too. And it, this happened with it, us and this happened with us. So I like that we're actually seeing it and some of them are working out and some of them are going well, like when we saw earlier with Anthony and Cynthia. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we're actually getting to see and I'm glad that they're making them pretty quick. Like the Blake and Johnny, I think it could have been a little shorter, but it was, we got to it. We got to it. And I'm glad we got to see it. Interesting matchup, didn't work move on i think that's good um the ladies all meet up at the church for the liberation and they all look super cute per usual as i said first episode of this season these ladies are just these ladies on this season are absolutely beautiful all the ladies all the seasons are beautiful but this is there's just a beautiful cast um these are just some beautiful melanated queens and i love to see it um i am so glad sue Ann has another connection she um connected with anthony i am so glad i'm like Whew. <laughs> girl I thought we was lost in here I thought you put all your eggs into Blake's flaky behind and I was like girl this is not gonna be good because Blake does not he's just not that into you I don't believe not as of now but I'm glad that she's feeling Anthony Anthony is a good candidate and I'm also glad that Anthony has a few connections himself because as I mentioned earlier he was MIA from the first several episodes and I was even talking a little crap about him first episode but now that they've shown him more I'm like Anthony might just have rose up I I will confidently say he as of now he's rose up to my most eligible bachelor on the on the on this season that's a that's a good dude he's showing up really well so far I love how he's treating these queens. I, I love it so far. And um, so far, he hasn't even been in the mess. Like, it seems like in deliberation, you know, he just seems like a cool, calm, collected, articulate dude. And I like that. So I'm glad that Sue Ann has connection with him, meaning she has another connection other than Blake. And I'm glad that Anthony has a couple. He's on a couple women's radar because I think it's well-deserved. And I'm glad that the ladies like him because... Based on what he's shown so far, it's a testament to these women being, having discernment, <laughs> having discernment, okay? Um, and I think they're doing well, like, getting the, the bad seeds out of here. I think both the men and the women, but I think the women are doing, I think the men are getting the people that they just don't, the women that they don't like out of here. But I think the women are getting men who just really aren't ready for this journey out of here if that makes sense i think the women are making a better a more intelligent decision um not that the guy's decision isn't intelligent because it's their opinion opinions perspective and it's valid but i think the women are being a little more intelligent with their decision and so far they've been spot on so i'm glad like i said that anthony is getting the love that he deserves it's a testament to their discernment thus far um Jeffrey said that Demario reached out to her to make amends after their conversation. And I'm honestly not surprised at all. Like, I would run if I were Jeffrey. Like, do you see how you, you went off on, you went off on Jeffrey about all these three bullet points, red flags about her, um, um, what was it? bullets i forgot what i said it was something about the bullets i forgot but red flags whatever um about jeffrey but now you want to be back in her space 
See, you you want to do this. You want to play these games. So you you come. You're doing the emotional thing. That's what you're doing. You're being sassy, and then you want to come back and be like things are cool after you didn't show your behind, talked crap about her, and then she's supposed to what? Submit to you. Because he asked somebody about submission first episode. Was it um, Z? He asked about submission. So she's supposed to submit to you after you didn't got on a confessional talking crap about her. Talking about the three red flags. Talking about her makeup. You know, that she don't take credit. Like all this stupid, childish, emotional criticism that you were given to this lady. And, and now you want to be back in her good graces. Get out of here with that. Like, Sue Ann jumps in where she had no business jumping in. Saying that Jeffrey did have a connection with him last week. And I'm like, okay, cool. That was then. This is now. She could change her mind. You don't know what her and him have talked about. You weren't there. School back. Nobody was talking to you. Sue Ann. So then that's why Jeffrey points out that Sue Ann has been an advocate for the men. And I haven't necessarily seen that from Sue Ann. I've just simply seen Sue Ann choose Blake based off what Blake has shown her. I think from Sue Ann's perspective, Blake has been nothing but a gentleman. He's attractive to her. He's been kind to her. She's injured. Like he hasn't done anything negative to her for her to dislike him. And I think that's totally fair. Like she, she doesn't have to like, like Jeff, I don't know. She does not have to see Blake the way you see Blake. You want everybody to feel this way about Blake because you feel that way about him. I'm like, Jeffrey, you have too much energy over him. And you keep saying, Sue Ann, you said Sue Ann questioned you over Blake. Roll the tape. When? To me, it seems like Jeffrey is just trying to have a moment. Like she, you, she, she's trying to read. She's trying to do these like, trying to get this attitude. And it's, a, it's flopping. Sue Ann doesn't even care that much. Like you really have all this energy. It reminds me of Alexis versus Divine over London where Alexis was piped up and Divine was like, it's not even that serious. Like it's not like this show is not that deep, sis. Like Jeffrey, you going really deep with it. You, you're mad. You big mad. You're big mad over Blake. It's not adding up to me. Um, my honest guess was that the bottom two was going to be Mario and Blake and that DeMario was going home. But I was like, also, this is Blake's second time in a row being in the bottom. So I really don't know. It could really go either way. Johnny meets with DeMario. And I was like, oh, I wonder how they would have like worked out. I wonder if they had. I don't know if they mentioned it. Was, I think it was their first day. I wonder how they would have worked out because they both have kind of like strong personalities. Like, I'm interested to see. Um... And he admits he prejudged Janik, and I can see why. Um, and I think Janik, through this process, if she's able to meet, if any of the guys are able to articulate, I think there's some um, things about Janik's image that she could stand to like get criticism for. Janik is beautiful; like she, she's absolutely beautiful. I think she has face card amazing, body amazing. She keeps herself up really well. I think some of the clothes she wears cheapens her look. That's my opinion. And I think she's, she, um, it doesn't give grown and sexy. That's what I'll say. Her, her style, her vibe doesn't give grown and sexy. And I think Janique is grown and sexy. Janique is successful. She's beautiful. I think she can give that. I think it's just, she needs to it's some things about her image that just to me just a little immature it doesn't give grown and sexy um so i think when demario said he prejudged Janique, i mean it's demario so that whatever but i can understand why somebody would say that um cynthia is with blake and he is already much lighter with her than he was with Janique. so um and I like Cynthia's way of communicating. It was, she was able to reach her audience with Blake. She was able to reach Blake because of her demeanor and her confidence. And I was like, I really like the dynamic between um, these two. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this 
this episode, I'm liking everybody together, apparently. Um, but she essentially encourages him to, you know, handle this business with Jeffrey, address it head on and just nip it in the butt just to knock this conversation and all this stuff out the way. Just go ahead and handle it. And after he found out he was staying, he wanted to compliment her on how good she looked in her dress. And I'm like, Blake, this is why I can't trust you. Yes, you misunderstood. But I just think he's just so out of his element. He'll cling on to whoever is into him and it's just validating him to get him to the end regardless. Like, I think he's just, this is so not his element. He don't know what to do. So I think Blake is willing to act out of desperation. Like, and I don't even think like it's on purpose. I think Blake is just so lost in a process like this. I don't think this is the type of process that Blake is meant to thrive in. And um, I don't know. Um, all I know is when you like Blake more than you, he likes you and I don't know. Demario is voted off. He does not throw a glass of wine in Johnny's face. And I'm like, that's a good thing because I could have sworn uh, Demario is going to have a temper tantrum. You couldn't tell me any differently. Um, he was just shocked. But I'm like, good riddance. Good riddance, Demario. Next episode, Blake and Jeffrey will seemingly address the beef. I hope they address it. Once and for all, I hope somebody gets caught in a lie. I hope this is, I hope we can finally re resolve this and be done with it. And I'm going to need Jeffrey to, to move on. Her and Blake are done. Okay. So I'm glad we got to see a lot of dates this episode. Um, I really liked that. Some really cool connections. And overall, it was a pretty good episode. Thank you so much for tuning in to my review. And I'll see you on the next episode. All right. Bye.